All right, so in photo P, with this project, assignment seven, we took inspirations, we used a hero reference, and we worked with digital painting, doing a sketch, doing a base color layer, then doing refined paint. And you shouldn't have any of your photo or any of your sketch visible in your final digital painting. It should all just be your base color and your refined paint. You can have it as a white background or as a, a gradated background. Please don't have a blank background. Or actually, you can't have a blank background. It can be white. Please don't have a solid color black background other than white, is what I mean to say, just because those do not print well. And a refined digital painting will look good on gray, on white, on a colored background, but even on black, like a velvet painting. So you can see the different kind of tricks I did, cutting away some of the base painting. You can kind of bite away with it with an eraser. There's just a lot we can we can do to play with it. Because once you have those paint strokes, then it's pretty easy to mess with the pixels you've already put down. So I have kind of my painting study on these different colors. Now what I can do, I showed you how you can play with, you know, the refined paint and different details you can do with it. You can play with softening it, layering it at different opacities, you know, letting more or less of the base color come through. You could try blending modes with it. It can give you some pretty out there effects. Soft light's often one that's nice. Kind of heightens contrast. Pin light. So from there, I want to try adding now some other skills to your digital painting. I've posted it. It's good. What about compositing? Right. So this was kind of the, the inspiration or one of them. What if I move that behind the image? And then sync it through the layers. There you go. Yeah, make her saintly. You can have different layers kind of showing at different rates, right? Maybe I want to move all of those paint layers now all unlocked. Come on. Just down a little bit. Get it all in there. Maybe I want to play with rasterizing this reference. So adjustments, hue saturation, push it into different directions. I think I like these, the kind of blues and purples. Okay. 
but then I'm going to take this, I'm going to turn contiguous off, I'm going to duplicate it on its own, whoops, from this one, move it up above, right? You can just play with so many things. Give it kind of its own texture, its own look. I don't love all the toxic greens, so I might just change those. Because at the end of the day, it's all just pixels. And you can do whatever you want with the pixels, as long as they're there to manipulate. Take those greens down or change their hue a little bit. Change things to dissolve mode in the background here. Merge them together. You have to rasterize first. There we go. Yeah. So you can have fun with it as long as you've you've built up your your layers enough in the first place. Now I can take this kind of thing and I can merge it all together by selecting everything. Maybe everything that's not locked holding down option and saying layer merge merge layers that will put it all onto one layer at the top come on there we go and now i can play with overall adjustments like levels brightening the midtones darkening them this is a lot for PhotoP to deal with, but seeing how balanced it is. There we go. I'm finding the right level. Playing with color balance is often really important in digital paintings. So in the shadows, maybe I want a little bit more blues. But in the highlights, I want more warms. In the midtones, maybe I want a little bit more yellow. Maybe I want to goose the highlights just a bit. While strengthening the shadows. And I can play with the overall hue and saturation. This is just greens, but I can do it with the master as well. And I'm going to push it a little bit more one way than the other. Let's be really wild to do something like this. See, what do I like? They're all pretty interesting. I like kind of how it pushes the skins towards monochrome. But then maybe I just erase out everything but the halo.
I like the warmth it brought to her robes, right? So I might not erase all that out. The big difference. Yeah. I even like that little bit of blue I left there. So I'm going to save that. And this can be kind of an extra digital painting that I add, right, with the background and with some of these composited features. That's just to demonstrate that we can do a lot of fun stuff in our final project. I will add her glasses, but that's just, that would take another 40 minutes or so. So this is just an alternate for my digital painting. Mm -hmm. That would be cute. I like that idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, so I might do something with that. I'm starting to like it more. Mm -hmm. A little bit. And because she's so famous for doing gender-based uh, law precedents, it's kind of nice to have like the blue with the pink, you know, as the background. Yeah, so you can kind of see how those influences all came together into something, and I can keep working on it. So turn something in. And you do not need to master the digital painting to get credit for it, because we're just we're just getting uh, introduced to it here. Okay, now we get to introduce our final project. And the reason I wanted to play with the digital painting at the end is because digital painting is a great way to mess with everything we've learned in the class, right from the very first exercises where we've played with compositing. and everything else, right? Like all these things you can continue to, to bring to bear on your work. So that's, next will be proving ground number four, which introduces our concept project, which is assignment eight.